Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back with another Reddit Ask Me Anything. We're joined by Rar <laughs> Rarin, Ryan Arancevia, one of the uh, star prospects from the Prospect series. What up, what up, what up? Thank you for having I, me, my brother. You know, I know your nickname's Danger, but I think maybe Rarin. Rarin would be a pretty good name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, whatever. If it, if, it fucking, if it sticks, right? Who gave you the nickname Danger? So, funny story. Um, My first amateur fight in 2019, I made a... I made like a like a hype video, and okay. the song was "What's Up Danger." I was like, "What's up, Danger?" I'm on my own, whatever. And it kept the hook was "What's up, Danger?" What's up, Danger? And bro, I was like a freshman or sophomore in high school, and after that video came out, everybody was like, "Yo, Danger, Danger, Danger!" So after that, it it just stuck. They were like, "What's up, Danger?" I was like, "What's up, What's up?" So after that, it it stuck with me. You look like you're still in high school. You're you're 19. You're a young looking guy. Like, what are you doing doing combat sports, bro? Honestly. I fucking, I graduated maybe last year, but bro, I've been combat sports since I was 14 years old. And bro, even before I started competing, I was always in the MMA gyms, bro. Cause my dad is a, is a, was a huge sponsor back in the day for all these guys, bro. Yo Romero, Alexis Vila. He actually oh, sure. sponsored uh, Jorge Masbra for his fight awesome. with means. Yeah. He sponsored uh, uh, Baboon Palomino before he was in BKFC when he was fighting in like CFA and World Series of Fighting and stuff. So I've always been around. Oh, bro, he sponsored uh, Jose Caceres when he choked out Usman. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. So what did you? What did your dad do? Like to sponsor them? Like so he's a bail bondsman. So oh, if you ever perfect. If you ever go to jail? Not you, because yeah. But anybody you know or anybody watching, if you ever go to jail, call my dad up and see the bail bonds. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Dude, that totally threw me off. You're like bail bondsman. Yeah, next time I go to Miami, now now I can hang out with some of you guys. Now that I know that I can get out of jail, you know, like 100, bro, bro. Don't get into trouble, bro. You know, it's so funny too because everybody's got this thing like, oh, he's a fighter. I bet he's you know he's mean, you know, or a dick. And, and most of you guys are so nice. You know what I mean? Like you just yeah, honestly, bro. We we get like the wrong in, like in, in impression. Like oh, he's a fighter. He beats people up, bro. The last thing we want to do is beat people up, and we don't have to, bro. Honestly, yeah. Okay, so you're two and zero for BKFC, right? Yeah, yeah, two and zero. Okay, uh, what is your overall record for? Uh, is it boxing or is it bare knuckle? Or I mean, I guess not bare knuckle, but is it boxing or like with the, the BKFC type uh, prospect gloves? So with the BKFC prospect gloves, I'm two and zero for BKFC prospects. But in the amateurs, uh, for USA boxing, I was actually six and three. Okay. And so, I mean, boxing, is that something you want to get into? Or you saw bare knuckle and you said, that's what I want to do. So, honestly, man, with bare knuckle, it's kind of just like, I'm very, very, very confident in my skill level in that sport. Like, I see these guys and I'm like, I know I, I can hang and I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. And also the platform for BKFC is huge. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's like, why am I going to go the route of amateur boxing where it's going to take me years to reach a, a certain type of level to get this notoriety when I can hop into BKFC, get growth, and then fight for BKFC, which is the fastest growing combat sport in like right now. You know what I'm saying? So it would, it just makes sense for me to go fight for them. And also I'm a fan of the sport. You know what I mean? Like I, I saw BKFC and I was like, damn, like this is something really exciting. Like we go to boxing fights and it's like, you know, it's boring. <laughs> So boxing is boring. Like, did you did you fall out of love with boxing once you found BKFC or? So the thing is, like, I didn't fall out of love with boxing because I mean, I still box in my fights. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a brawler. Sure. I, I like to Absolutely. be technical, and I have a lot of experience, like training wise. Like, I only have nine fights in the amateurs, but it's because COVID ruined like two years of it. If not, I would have had 25, 30 fights. Okay. But, um, bro, honestly, I'm not out of love with boxing, but. It's it's kind of a business decision for me. Like I see where bare knuckle is, and I see where boxing is, and, and I, I see bare knuckle way, like the trending, the way bare knuckle's trending is way higher than boxing is. Boxing's kind of at like a plateau, in my opinion. Right. So it's a lot of like influencer and celebrity boxing, which I'm more than open to doing that. You know what I mean? Because that's that's a life changing money for me. But yeah. re besides that, man, it's way more exciting to the people that would go to watch me fight, to watch me fight bare knuckle, or to watch me fight. Right now, even with the MMA gloves and to go into boxing with those huge pillows and fight a guy that, you know what I'm saying, it's not even worth, like, it's not worth it, you know what I mean? The, to fight someone in BKFC, it's like, you know, I'm fighting somebody that is going to bring me a fight. In boxing, it's kind of like no one even goes to the amateur boxing shows. It's all tournaments where you got to go upstate, 
sure. um, and go fight. But here, it's in my hometown. I got a bunch of supporters. It just makes sense for me to fight for them. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so you have a huge fan base, right? Like you are, you are like you were the main event on the last card, right? Well, I was actually the co-main event. Co- co-main event. Okay. Yeah. Right but bro, yeah, man, I I brought a huge crowd out, and for my first fight, I brought a huge crowd out as the feature fight. I got bumped to co-main event for this for the last card, and now I got bumped to main event for the amateurs on this card. So I mean, bro, my supporters are doing a, a phenomenal job of going out and supporting me because it's because of you guys that I'm the main event. You know what I mean? Okay. Everybody can fight, but does everybody have the fan base? And I. I clearly do. How did you uh, How did you get this fan base? So, bro, honestly, I have a lot of people that, that like me and a lot of people I grew up with that want to see me grow. So, I, I, and I'm, not, I'm, there, I'm not a person that anybody could ever have anything bad to say about me. I've never robbed anybody. I've never done anybody wrong. You know what I'm saying? I've sure. always been a good kid. And you can ask, I mean, you can ask the people I train with and you can ask anybody in BKFC if you, if that knows me. They, that kid's a good kid. You know, he's straight up. He... He does the right thing, and I feel like that has, has took me a long way because now I'm I'm here and I have a huge fan base and my face is clean, you know. So who do you train with? So I train with uh, Brian O'Gall Duran. Uh, I I don't train at the same time as him. He trains uh, an hour later than me. But okay. Luis Palomino. Uh, I train with uh, Armando Rodriguez, who's one and zero in Valor. Uh, he should be making his bare knuckle debut soon. Okay. So that's really like. Me, Gallo, and and Armando are like the the big three at, at that time. We go at, in at ten a.m. We okay. do our work and we leave. But also uh, now, uh, Dirt to Gold, uh, Petey Peraz is there. Uh, also, Christian Esquilin, he's actually making his MMA pro debut soon. He fought in the Prospects card okay. in December. He won. So we all train at the same time. Really, we all help each other out. And what what really benefits me from that is that we're all in the same weight class. We're all one forty five, one thirty five, one fifty five. We all help each other out. So is Duran kind of shaking in his boots that you're coming up at 145 and he's going to no, have to face man, you? No, 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 never, 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 never. My, I, bro, I'll never even fight at 145 if I turn pro for BKFC just because I'll never, like, try to overstep him. Which sure. I, I never will. That's, that's my brother, bro. Like, we, he helps me out more than I could have ever imagined, bro. He walks me out for my last fight. He's walking me out for this fight. He's teaching me the nitty-gritty and, and everything that, I mean, he's a bare-knuckle vet. He's got six fights, and they're all by knockout. Right. So he's teaching me things that, I mean, I don't even want to say on here because I'm not trying to give nobody tips and tricks. But no, nah, bro, that's my brother. I'll never – I'm fighting 135. My, this fight's at 140 at a catch free, and then after that I'm going down to 135, and I'm ready to run through them. Has he got you punching hammers and stuff yet? Yeah, bro, he's got me doing crazy stuff all the time, bro. He's like, bro, let's do this, let's do that. We actually have we, – we should be coming out with, with, a, with a crazy video that, we're, that we've been planning on doing for a while now. And yeah. I'm like, bro, we got to do it. And he's like, bro, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. He's actually in Orlando right now for Gamebird FC. Okay. Uh, well, he was there. I'm pretty sure he's back down now. It's Sunday. But, yeah. bro, we got a crazy video that we're going to do now. It's something that nobody's done. <laughs> okay. So what do you do to pay for all this? I mean, you're amateur, right? So you, you, you can't make any money off the fights yet. So what do you do yeah, for work? No, it, it would be illegal. But um, I actually work at a school, bro. So I, I freaking, it's perfect because I train in the morning from 10 to maybe 12. Okay. And then I'll leave there, go home, shower, and then one thirty to six, I'll I'll be in, I'll I work in aftercare, and I watch all these kids. And bro, it, it's honestly like people tell me like, bro, because the guy always brings his son to the gym, Aiden, and he's yeah. like, bro, how you so good with kids? I'm like, bro, I work at a school, like you know what I'm saying, like that. I, yeah. I've taken in that little kid, like as his brother slash uncle. You know what I mean? Like I I watch him grow, I help him out in anything he does, and everybody's like shocked with how good I am with kids. Like, bro, I work at a school. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, Aiden's a great kid. But uh, same thing, like when I was in high school, like uh, it just worked out so well because I was in wrestling. So I could go to wrestling and then I worked in after school childcare. It was fantastic. Oh, look. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like me. You know how yeah. it works. Bro. You go in the morning, then you work, and then at night it's either work out again or right now for me, I'm selling tickets, bro, because there's no link this time for my fight. So it's all going to people's houses, meeting up with people, dropping off tickets, bro. It's a nonstop grind. But honestly, it teaches me a bunch of discipline, bro, because if I'm not there at 1.30, they're going to fire me. <laughs> So you can't get paid to fight, but can you get paid commission for ticket sales, or is that illegal too? Well, I actually, for this fight, I'm not sure if we're making money, but the last two fights, no, I have not made anything off ticket sales. Okay. So it has to be like you make nothing off of it, yeah. Yeah. Which is I mean, unfortunate. Yeah, no, it sucks, bro, but honestly, the people at Bernalco have done nothing but but awesome to me, bro. Like Nelson Lopez, uh, Serge, freaking Joshua, Andy Hall, they've done nothing but show me love and... Bro, they give me a platform that no money can buy, bro. There's a lot of people will kill to be in the position that 
that I'm in and, and the people that fight for BKFC prospects are in, bro. It's honestly a huge platform. And bro, you know what it is to say you fight in the same promotion as Mike Perry? Like Yeah. You know, people don't people don't get that. We're blessed yeah. to have an opportunity like that. Absolutely. Okay, so you you work and you train and you fight. What else do you do? Bro, honestly, man, I freaking I'm uh, that that basically takes up my whole day, bro. But besides that, bro, I love sports, bro. Like I, I'm I'm a sports freak, bro. I watch anything from bas baseball to hockey to freaking basketball to football, bro. Like those are my things. You know what I'm saying? Like people always ask me, "Oh, you watching this fight tonight?" I'm like, "No, nah, bro. I'm watching sports or I'm getting my rest." You know what I'm saying? I, I love sports, bro. I'm a huge so freaking Heat fan, bro. Cause from down here from Miami. Okay, so if you weren't a, a fighter, would you have tried to go pro in any of the other sports or? Bro, I'm five nine and Hispanic, bro. I don't think I got a shot. You, you couldn't be at, a baseball player. Come else, on. Brother. But, bro, honestly, man, if I, if, well, I mean, dude, I, I don't know where this is going to take me. You know what I'm saying? Sure. The platform's huge, but, bro, I'd love to be a manager, bro. I mean, I know a lot about sports, but I would love, bro, I'd love to have been, like, a, a journalist or a freaking announcer, one of those things, bro, because it really interests me. And I have the mind, the mindset and mentality of an athlete, so I, I know where they're coming from. You know what I'm saying? So I've been talking with another manager and he's like, he's like, there's so much more. He's like, so many of these guys say, Oh, I'm a manager and suddenly think they're a manager. He goes, there's a lot of to it. And you got to get licensed and all this stuff. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. So like, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some schooling for that. So it sounds like, you know, I mean like that, absolutely. I feel like you'd be good at it. You know, you've got the, I feel I, the one thing that kind of irks me and, and I understand it, but like when you get somebody who's like never been part of the company or never been part of like the boxing thing. And they're trying to tell you and you're like, you, you don't necessarily, it's kind of like if someone's going to be an NFL coach and they've never played in the NFL or something. Exactly. You know? There's a lot of guys that like try to come into the, to the, to the boxing world and, and I've never lived the life of a boxer. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. Or I've never lived the life of any athlete really, because dude, it, it takes a lot of work to go out there and you perform in front of all those people. I mean, dude, I only perform in front of maybe 1500 and it's like, damn, I'm not right. performing in front of 60,000 and having the weight of the world on your shoulders and performing. It's really hard, and these guys throw a lot of pressure on these guys. Oh, you got to get this done and this done and that done. It's like, bro, let us do us. <laughs> okay, so you're doing prospects. You've had quite a few fights. I mean, are you are you cool just staying in your lane doing prospects? Do you want to get on the big card sooner than later so you go pro? Or Yeah, well, bro, I'm 19, man. Like, I would love, you know what I'm saying, to get the big money fight as soon as possible. But, bro, I, I trust my work ethic. I trust my process, and I, I trust the – the the road that Bare uh, the Bare Knuckle team has really paved for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm taking it step by step. I'm making sure I collect all of the wins. I want to be a champion in prospects before I even step to uh, the Bare Knuckle, uh, like the the pros, taking off sure. the gloves. I want to be a champion there, so I have accolades, and you know, I, I bring something to the table. Everybody knows that I'm a good ticket seller. Everybody knows that I can fight clearly because I haven't lost. Right. It's not just. What else can I bring to the table to show, hey, you know what? I'm worth something. I don't want to lowball myself either. You know what I'm saying? And fight. Bare knuckle. Bare knuckle is not, it's not a joke, dude. Like, bare knuckle is hard. So, you know what I'm saying? Why fight for peanuts when I could keep working my way up and keep doing more for the promotion and then, you know, get a, get, get a, good, get a good deal in or wherever it takes you, bro. Honestly, man. That would be interesting. To, I mean, because, like, I mean, we've seen a couple of prospect series. Um, it would be kind of interesting to see like a belt and like give you guys something to work for. And then, hey, I got the belt and now you get the promotion, you know, versus, oh, I got yeah. a knockout and I'm ready to go. Yeah. So the way that they've really portrayed it to me, I'm pretty sure I'm I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be a belt coming soon to the promotion, which would be huge, really, because you, I mean, bro, like Baron Uncle is right there not like this is bare knuckle and ufc but the thing about absolutely. ufc is that ufc is here bare knuckles like this and absolutely slowly but surely they'll catch up to them and you know what i'm saying you look at the guys like from the ultimate fighter this is the way i see it for the prospects this is this is kind of like our ultimate fighter you know what i'm absolutely. saying sure like you got nate diaz you got diego sanchez you got joe lozon you got all these veterans that got famous but the reason they got famous is because they, they took the right steps. You know what I'm Absolutely, saying? Absolutely, sure. And they're a pioneer for the UFC. Forrest Griffin, Chuck Liddell, you know what I'm saying? Those yeah. guys are all pioneers. So I would hope to be one of those guys, you know what I'm saying? Where later down the road, 10, 15, 15 years later, a kid like me could look and be like, damn, I want to be like Ryan. He did it the right way. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Go, do it, win the belt there, then climb up the rankings, then win a belt in BKFC, and then hopefully, uh, bro, stay a champion or get a big money fight, represent BKFC in boxing. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm still a boxer at heart. So 
Yeah, I mean, the crossover. Bro, I, have lot of, I have a lot of things that I have in mind. A lot of things that, you know, it comes with time. I'm not going to sit here and try to cut the line when I've never been one to cut the line. You know what I'm saying? I pay my dues in the amateurs. I'm, I, I may have cut the line a little bit because now I'm jumping onto a bigger platform, but I'm still going to build the way I'm supposed to build. You know what I'm saying? Because when I want when I go into Bernardo, I want to be like 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 Delgado. You want to be like Brian, who's knocking everybody out. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So do you have that knockout power? Bro, so this is really funny because I, I hopped on a podcast the other day and my cousin, who is Jack, bro, and, and he's like, he's uh, actually signed to University of New Orleans. He's a senior in high school. Okay. And bro, he's he's my strength and conditioning coach. And he's always telling me, bro, you know what I'm saying? You got to let me help you out. You got to let me help you out, bro. You're not getting that punchy power. And I'm like, bro, we're going to get it. So now for this camp, it's been my first full fight camp. My fight in December was on two weeks notice. Okay. And then my fight in October was on a month's notice. So I've had now time. I've known this fight was coming since January. Okay. So we've been working on getting that, that knockout power. And bro, I, I'm, I'm lean right now. And I'm, I'm at the same weight I was like up my last fight. But okay. I feel way stronger. So I'm hoping to get a knockout in this fight. My last fight came with, uh, a sec- uh, after the first round, the guy couldn't answer the bell. Sure. I was ripping him with body shots. But, bro, that knockout power is coming, dude. I, I friggin', I'm working hard, and I work two days every single day. So I'm ready, bro. And, and got, also, Guy was taking me to the gym with him, teaching me his tricks. So er- er- like I said, bro, everything comes little by little. I'm not one to rush, bro. I know, I know what I have in me, and I know that I can outbox anybody at the <clears throat> prospect level. But now I want to start putting people out. So that'll come hopefully March 15th. <laughs> you know, I love a good knockout, but there's something with hitting somebody with like a liver body shot and just putting them down. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe, maybe yep. you go for a liver shot for me. Come on now. <laughs> no, bro, dude. So my, my, my fight in, in December, yeah. uh, bro, they were telling me in the locker room, hit him in the body, hit him in the body, hit him in the body. And I was like, all right. I'm going to hit him in the body because, bro, at the end of the day, I'm big on trusting the people that you surround yourself with. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Yeah. If I'm there at the gym, why would I not listen to the people that have I've been there before? Like, why am I going to act like a know-it-all? I, bro, this year, I'm absorbing everything. Every every little thing I see, it's, it's I'm soaking it all in, and I got a lot more to soak in. So they're telling me, rip the body, bro. First round, bing, 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 bing. All body shots. Maybe like two, three clean overhand rights that I landed because he was a bigger guy. But, bro, after that, he told me, he's like, bro, I couldn't breathe. He told sure. me when we saw the doctors that I couldn't breathe. So I'm working on, I'm, bro, I'm, I'm with the body, bro. I'm, techni- I'm technically sound, bro. I, I, I really am. Not to toot my own horn, sure. but I'm not a guy that's going to go out there looking for a knockout. I'm going to go try to go out there and pick my shots, and hopefully one of those shots puts you out. Well, I'm working on that punch of power, so it probably will. All right, Ryan. Well, we lo- really look forward to seeing you fight again. I, you know, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait for you to get to the, the the pros. But I mean, I would love to see you fight for a belt too. That'd be great. So I appreciate yeah, your time. Yeah, I mean, bro. Hopefully, man. I I, I trust Bare Knuckle, bro. I, I trust their plan for me. I know that I know they like me, and I really appreciate them. And it's a real it's a real strong mutual connection that we have. So I don't want to step on anybody's toes. You know, whatever they have planned for me, I'm more than willing to do it. But I will say, this fight is in front of David Feldman, and if he says, "Hey, you know what? We got right. some here." You know, I'm excited, bro. I really can't wait for March 15th. All right, you're a prospect, so go ahead and shout out some uh, sponsors or some some of the people you need to real quick. Bro, so huge shout out to my father, uh, Aaron Siba Bail Bonds. If you ever go to jail, I mean, bro, we're human. You know what I'm saying? I've never been sure. to jail. I never will, hopefully. But if you ever do run into a situation, bro, I, I know it's hard, bro. Like, sure. Life, life, life comes at you in many different forms, and you could be doing nothing and still get – Caught in a jam. Bro, hit up my dad. Another sponsor is Dynamic Wellness. Dude, those people are based here in Miami. Uh, Louis Alonzo, bro, that guy has brought me in and taken care of me like like family, bro. It, it's truly been a blessing. Uh, I know he takes care of a lot of the local guys down here as well. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you've heard the name before. If not, absolutely, you're hearing it now. You know what I'm saying, bro? Huge shout-out to them, bro. Huge shout-out to Insurance, Insurance Group, bro. They have freaking... Help me out, bro, for this fight camp, paying for paying for things, bro. And dude, I work at a school, but you know, it gets it gets tough, bro. You gotta pay for fight shorts, you gotta pay for freaking uh, the gym, meal preps, because I'm cutting weight, shoes. Um, bro, huge shout out to Jugga to Juggernaut Sports, uh Jugga Gear. They're actually okay. making my they're comping me my gear. Cool. So yeah, bro, and a huge shout out to Bare Knuckle, bro. Honestly, dude, the Bare Knuckle Prospect Amateurs, bro. I recommend it to any single person that that really wants this. To, to, to go through the bare knuckle route, bro. They're, they're taking care of their guys, bro. This is a huge platform that not a lot of people have. And, bro, Nelson, Serge, Josh, Andy, bro, they really have 
paved the way, bro. And also, bro, a huge shout out to uh, bro, my cousin, bro. <laughs> My cousin, bro, he's he's really helped me out a lot, bro, for this fight camp, and uh, I, I owe him a knockout for the work, all the work he's been putting into me, bro. So I'm gonna get him a knockout, hundred percent. Right. And a shout all out right. to you as well, bro, for having me on here, bro, because you know what I'm saying. I got shout yeah. outs for days, man. <laughs> for days, yeah. All right, well, I appreciate it. Like I said, you're 19. We're gonna see a lot of you in the future. I just wanted to make sure that I got you in before you became a huge star. So you got to remember when we, you get up to the top. No, hundred percent, brother. And I hope you're out there, March fifteenth, bro. I, I I got you, bro. I'm gonna hit him with the liver shot. If he falls the liver shot, if not, I'll hit him in the face and knock him out there. <laughs> All right, sir. Thanks so much. No problem, my brother.